Okay, here's our second and final algebra review lesson here. Um, just a couple of little warm-up problems here from the first lesson. Uh, finding a slope, again, for our slope, we're going to use that m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I'm just going to label these x1, y1, x2, y2. And again, I'm doing that just to remind myself that I need to put these values first on both the numerator and denominator and on the top and the bottom. And then I'll put the x1 and y1 on the, as the second value on each. So y2 is 5 minus y1, which was negative 3. So that's minus a negative 3. And then x2 is a negative 6 minus x1, which is 7. So 5 minus a negative 3 is the same as 5 plus 3 over negative 6 minus 7. So that would be 8 over a negative 13. So you could leave it like that, or you could write it as negative 8 thirteenths, or even a negative out front, and then 8 thirteenths. Um, but our slope here would be negative 8 thirteenths. And again, just make sure you're organized on, on the y2 and x2 going first, um, so you don't cross over the points in any way there. Um, part B here, write an equation that is perpendicular to the line. So again, this is written in point slope form, but all we really need from this is the slope. And if you recall for perpendicular, anytime we have a perpendicular line, the slope is the opposite reciprocal. So in this case, it was 5 6 originally. So our new slope is going to be negative 6 fifths. All right. And then it gives us the y intercept. And so we, because this is an x of 0, so that means that is the y-intercept. So b is equal to 1, and it asks to put in slope-intercept form, which is the y equals mx plus b. Again, the other one is point-slope form, which is what this equation is written in, um, where you actually use the point x1, y1 in your equation. But again, we've got our slope here and our intercept here, so we just need to write this y equals negative 6 fifths x with an intercept of 1, and there we go. So just a little recap of last unit, um, but now let's jump ahead. So we have um, the two equations we talked about in the first lesson. Um, sorry, I said a review of last unit, really a review of the last lesson. Um, we have the slope-intercept form, and we have the point-slope form, which are the two we talked about last lesson. And then there's one more um, right here, which is the ax plus by equals c. And again, x and y are still variables. The a, b, and c here are values, and we're going to talk about how we can make this one look a little more like these here as we progress. So first thing we need to be able to do is to solve for y. So again, if we want the y alone, on this particular problem, all we need to do is add the 6x to both sides. And again, what's done onto one side must be done onto the other. And when you do that, now all of a sudden we just have the y left on the left side, and we've got 6x plus 4, or if you wanted to write it as 4 plus 6x, you could. Um, this is just our mx plus b format, so you're a little more used to that, perhaps. Um, again, all we had to do there was move over the 6x, and so we had our mx plus b uh, form there. Now, on the second one here, it's a little more complicated because we've got this negative 3 in front of the y, or a minus 3. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the 2x first, and when you do that now, that leaves us with a negative 3y. Don't forget that negative, okay? It's, it's still there. Um, and then on the right side, we have negative 2x plus 12. And again, I just put the negative 2x in first since that's the format we're used to. And now, I want to get the y alone. And so to undo this multiplication right here, I have to divide and a I want to divide by exactly what's in front of the y, which is the negative 3. And what's done onto one side, again, must be done onto the other. Now, when you do this on the other side, what you're really doing is you are dividing both the negative 2x by negative 3 and the 12 by negative 3. Okay, so each one of those has to be divided, um, and you can kind of get used to whether that's done separately or you write it like I did right here. Um, either way is fine if you want to write it like this or like this. 
Um, but then we're going to solve. So we've got negative 2 over negative 3. A negative over a negative is a positive. So that's 2 thirds x. And then 12 divided by negative 3 is a negative 4. So that becomes a minus 4 or a plus negative 4 would be fine as well. Um, but again, that's solving for y there and dividing uh, by that negative 3 on really on all three individual parts here. So, so you can see I divided by the negative 3 here, divided by the negative 3 here, and divided by the negative 3 here. And that gave me my final equation of 2 thirds x minus 4. Okay, now looking at the idea of getting this back into the slope and the intercept that we're used to, again this kind of being the y equals mx plus b format, um, I'm going to solve for y once again, and I'm just going to do this relatively quickly here. So I'm going to add the 4x to both sides. And now I have a 2y equals 4x minus 10. Again, it was a negative 10, so that's why it's minus 10 now. Um, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I'll just kind of do this part by part. Okay. Um, or again, you could just divide the whole right side by 2. That's fine as well. Um, but now the y is gone. My slope is now 4 divided by 2 here. And 4 divided by 2, of course, is 2. And my intercept is negative 10 divided by 2. So my intercept would be a negative 5. So if I wanted to write it in this equation, in this form in the end, I have 2x plus a negative 5 or minus 5. Okay. Um, again, what I'm really doing here is I'm taking that ax plus by equals c format and ultimately just solving for the y so that I can write it into my y equals mx plus b form. Okay. Now with graphing these, the easiest way to graph these is to really try and start with the point or the y-intercept, okay? So the, what, this distinction here depends on what form you're using. So if it's point-slope form, you're gonna start with the point. If it's slope-intercept form, you're gonna start with the intercept. So this first one here is slope-intercept. That's the y equals mx plus b. Of course, it's a minus here. But what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna find that intercept first, which is negative five. So I'm gonna count down one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to put a little dot there. That's the point 0, negative 5. That's my y-intercept. Now, my slope is 2, which means my rise over run is 2 over 1. Okay, um, It's a positive slope, so it should be going uphill. So I'm going to rise 2 and then run 1. Rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1 and so on until I get a handful of points that I can just trace, okay? And I could go down two and back one, down two and back one if you wanted to do that as well. Um, but there's our slope of two. I'm gonna put arrows at the end because I assume the line goes on forever unless it tells me otherwise. Um, so what I've done here is I use the y-intercept first and then I use the slope to graph two or more points. As you can see there, I graphed about seven of them and then I just connected the points. Now, the second type here is a little more complicated because we have to keep in mind that we've got these weird kind of subtractions in the equation. So I do have to extract what my point is here. Um, and so what gave us a plus 1 there? Well, that would have been an x minus a negative 1. So the point there would have been a negative 1 for my x-coordinate. Okay. Similarly, what gave us the y minus 4 here would have just been a y1 of 4, since the minus is already there. So you just have to remember that if you see a plus here, like we saw here, that means the point was originally negative. Um, if it's a minus, that means the point was originally positive because the equation has subtraction built into it. So that's why it's backward like that. Um, so now I graph that first point, like it said to down here. My first point is at negative 1, 4. Again, this is the x's and the y's. The x's go first, and this is the positive direction for the x's, and this is the negative direction. Then the y's go second, and going up is positive, and going down is negative. 
So I have to go backward in the X's and up in the Y's, which gives, brings us to that point right there. Now my slope here is negative 3 fourths, so I know I'm going downhill um, because it's negative. And so my rise over run in this one would be a negative 3 over 4, so that means my rise is a negative 3, so it's actually a fall. So I'm going to go down 3, and then my run is 4, so I'm going to go and run over 4. Now the run is positive here, right, since this is 4 and not negative 4. So the run does go to the right. Again, the rise, if it's positive, will go up. If the rise is negative, it will go down. If the run is positive, it will go to the right. If the run is negative, it will go to the left. Um, so I could have written this as 3 over negative 4 if I wanted to, and it would have accomplished the same thing. We would have just been going up 3 and then back 4. Um, and so it's the same idea. You can see it's all on the same line here. It doesn't matter really what direction you go as long as you don't mix up your rise and your runs and going positive or negative directions. So here you should have at least a couple points. We draw that line through, we put an arrow on it, and this is now our line for this equation right here. Again, the slope was important. It looks like the y-intercept might be three. We could check it out, but we don't have to here. It's actually not quite exactly three um, as I look at the equation, but uh, that just means my drawing's a little bit off. Um, but that right now we aren't worried about necessarily exactly what the y-intercept is because we're graphing obviously we want to be accurate but we're really graphing off of the point slope form so as long as you have your dots that show that you went to the point negative one four and you use the proper slope then you're fine there um, so there's the, the graphing of a point slope uh, problem a um, couple more equations here that we'll that we can graph um, here we've got a, a, again, this is a slope intercept. This is mx plus b. Our intercept here is a negative five, so I'm just gonna jump down five points. Okay, down one, two, three, four, five, so that's zero, negative five. And my slope now is three over two, so my rise over run is a three over two. It's a positive slope, so it should be going uphill. Um, and so as I rise three, I run two, or as I fall three, I go back two, which would have been like a negative three over negative two when I went the other direction. Um, which of course, negative over a negative is also a positive, so these two are the same thing. Um, so you can go either way. Uh, and then I connect the points, and I've got my line. My line has an intercept of negative five, and it has a slope of three halves. Uh, similarly over here again, we've got this point slope and the X was a minus. So that means the X is positive this time. The Y ended up being a plus. So that means it was a Y minus a negative three again, because the minus is built into the equation. Sorry, that looks like a plus now. Um, so this is negative three. So I'm going to graph that point first, and again, this is x in a positive direction, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then y is in a negative direction, so I'm going to go down 3. So this is the point 6, negative 3. And my slope here is negative 4, so my rise over run is negative 4 over 1, or again, it could be four over negative one. Those are equal to each other as long as there's just one negative. So if I do either of those here, negative four over one would be a fall of four or a rise of negative four and then a run of one. Or the four and the negative one means we'd actually go up four but back one. Um, either way, you can see we have a pretty steep negative slope here. Um, as it goes down four, it goes over one. Again, you can just always double check at the end, is my slope going downhill when it's negative? Is my slope going uphill when it's positive? And that's just a way to check your answer on that one. Um, slide here. These are the two unique cases um, of when the slope is zero or infinity, or as we call undefined. Um, what you just want to remember here is if the, ans if the equation is just y equals a number, 
Okay, what that means is as we go up, so if y equals 7, okay, I think that's 7. Um, now you think about, is this going sideways or up and down? Well, in order for y to continue to equal 7, this needs to go sideways. Okay, so this is really y equals 0x plus 7, meaning the slope is 0. Um, but the y, because this is the y-axis, always needs to be 7 units above the x-axis here. So, so this, when you get a y equals, just remember that's a slope of 0. When you get an x equals, well now that the x is negative 3, and in order for the x to stay negative 3, we've got to stay on this vertical line. So the slope here is undefined, or you could say it's infinity. Um, and in this situation, we wouldn't really write a, a, an equation like this. Okay, you don't really have, you don't write y equals infinity x. That doesn't, um, again, infinity is more of a concept, and so we aren't writing it as an equation. So we would just write it as x equals negative 3. Just like this one's okay to write as y equals 7. You don't need to write it like this. Um, that was just showing you where that slope is. So keep in mind, y equals a number is going to be horizontal. And x equals a number is going to be vertical. All right, thank you for listening. As always, if you have questions, please ask. Uh, and uh, please give this stuff a little practice time here. Thank you.